Welcome back to Tribulation Institute, the remnant saints of Yahweh Elohim. You know, I want to thank uh, all my past subscribers and my new subscribers uh, to this channel. And uh, I do want to let you know, if you don't already know, that I have another channel. There's links There's links to it in the uh, description box to my other channel with a couple 250 videos. Um, what I want to talk to you today about and all those that are going to view this video I want to settle the question once and for all for all the saints of Yahweh God that has not come into the truth of the quote rapture and this is given out of love, and you can go to my old uh, website, and I had many videos that, you know, speak about the post-tribulation rapture, give the view, and so forth, of which I am. I used to teach the pre-tribulation rapture, but I stopped that 35 years ago when I came to the truth of the matter, because I had a love for the truth. Now, we hear people say, well, you know, that the, those that believe in the tribulation, well, the coming of Jesus uh, is in two different parts. That the rapture and his coming are two different things. Well, that couldn't be further from the truth, but before you reject what I just said out of hand, please listen and pray before you do that, which there uh, undoubtedly will be a whole bunch of pre-tribbers that want to come to my website as they have in the past, and the other one by the hundreds that want to tell me, uh, teach me about something I've been studying, meaning the rapture, the tribulation of the Bible, for 40 years. You know, it's time, saints... <sighs> We're in the second seal already, okay? Uh, time is getting short uh, because at the end of the birth pangs, no one's getting saved. There's silence in heaven for a half hour. That's three and a half years. All right, having said that, let's get back to, well, there's, there's actually two comings. He's coming for us, and then he's coming back again with us. And there'll be many that's left behind because they didn't take part in the rapture. And we're going to meet him up in the air. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 2 Thessalonians. We're going to meet him up in the air and we're, for the marriage. And for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I know that's what you all say. Look, I used to teach the same thing. I know all those scriptures. But here's what I want you to... I, please, I beg you. Please, at least hear me out, then pray about it, like I said. Because chapter 19 in the book of Revelation is clear on the matter. You know, what I first learned, you know, 40 years ago you know, in, in Bible school, um, Bible college for four years, that the first thing you need to know about correctly understanding and studying the Bible, the exegesis of the Bible, is take the things that are plainly said that really take no interpretation, such as immediately after the tribulation of those days in Matthew 24, and that's our Messiah speaking, mind you. And there's many other sayings uh, as, as well that must take them plainly. And you need to do that with Revelations 19. That don't go away. Please hear me out. Hear me to the end. It perfectly explains it. And then there's a warning given by Jesus, Yahshua, who, is, who it really is, uh, to those that add to and take away from the book of prophecy. Talking about Revelation, but he's also talking about the whole the whole Bible, Old Testament, New Testament. New Testament is two thirds direct quotes of the Old Testament, and two thirds of it is about his second coming. 
Now, concerning the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm going to put my spectacles on here. Let's see what the 19th chapter of the book of Revelation has to say about it. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls of the air, uh, they fly in the midst of heaven. Come and gather yourselves together to the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of the horses and them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together, I said to Armageddon, to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. It ain't against Israel. That's some more BS. I mean the the uh, the false nation of Israel over there. And that's another for another time. I'm going to read that again. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make more war against him that sat on the throne and against his army. So, we've established the fact in the word there that says the marriage supper of the Lamb. But here's, here's the real, cat, real catcher. Back up to verse 7. Alright. Listen to this. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor unto him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, not will come later, is come, and his wife, that's the bride, hath made herself ready. Which is what the whole book of Revelation is about. Look, the tribulation is a the, the birth pangs are about making his bride ready. Ready for what? Yeah, no, I hadn't forgot what I was going to say. I want you to just stop thinking about what I'm fixing to tell you. The Bible said that Yahshu is sitting at the right hand of the Father till his enemies are made his footstool. That's the kingdom mandate that was restored to us by Yahshua that Adam failed in doing so. He gave up the authority to do so to Satan. Yahshua got it back and it's taken 2,000 years for the remnant saints to wake up to the truth of that message, which is what Daniel chapter 12 verse 1 tells us that in the last days there will some they're in the dust of the earth, not in the graves. They will wake unto righteousness and shine. They're awakened to the truth. Now, so, I want to now, now for those that are thinking about leaving, I already left, I can't help you, but if you think about leaving, please let me turn to Revelation 22. Uh, 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, has sent mine angel to testify unto you, you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add to these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, shall take God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. You need to let that sink in for those of you that are still holding to the doctrine of demons in a pre-tribulation rapture, saying that he's coming for the rapture and taking you up for a seven-year period. The Bible is also plain that the day of the Lord 
the day, not days, the day of the Lord is on the last day. It's one day. You go, well, we don't, we won't know the day. We don't know the day, but we know the week. And the month is the Feast of Trumpets. It's in the month of October. Seven days long, so you won't know what day it is when he returns. But I want to get back to the difference. Those that say, well, he's coming down for us and we'll be back seven years later. And they say, you know, you really have to understand it comes in two parts. Here's the way it takes place, biblically speaking. Yahshua, when his enemies are made his footstool, he's the man child sitting at the right hand of the Father, he's the head, and his body in the church when the man child is birthed, that's when the last number of the 144,000 uh, have been sealed. Then Satan gets kicked out of heaven to the earth. It says, woe unto the habit inhabitants of the earth. So what's taking place here? Yahshua leaves. He's sitting down. He's going to come down to stand on the Mount of Olives outside the city of Jerusalem. So, He's on the way down in his first Corinthians fifteen fifty one and second Corinthians I mean second Thessalonians says as well. He catches up, there's your rapture, he catches up, caught those that are dead in Christ first, and then along with those that remain alive together with him in the air. Then he comes on down. It's the same day. And then he comes on down with them. And he removes the wicked from the earth, those that have taken the mark of the beast, and he sets up his kingdom. It's all one event. It's not two events. And if you come against what, and I just repeat what the Bible says. So if you come against and add to that, well, there's two comings. No, it's two parts of one coming. He's coming away down, catches us up, and returns down. And then, as chapter 19 says, that's the marriage supper of the Lamb. They're married and proceed right on down to the marriage supper. I mean, to the marriage supper, which is along with the marriage. Pray about it. See what you come up with. And please, comment. Not now comment in the comment section after you've prayed and looked at it and prayed with an open heart. Anyway, love you. Hope to see you next time. Please subscribe.